Another episode of The Bad Batch is out and it's everything we could have hoped for. Per usual, there will be spoilers for the episode in this video, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, go do so. We really mean it this time. Watch this episode unspoiled if you can. As we discussed just last week, Star Wars The Bad Batch has shown us quite a few examples of clones taking responsibility for their actions, doing the right thing and betraying the Empire in spite of their inhibitor chips. But in today's episode, we got to see the other shoe drop. It's become abundantly clear that clones had a lot more free will than they were often given credit for. Though, to be fair, we've been telling you guys this the whole time. Even with the inhibitor chips, they were perfectly capable of making the right choices and of making the wrong choices. This episode's stunning reveal that Crosshair was acting of his own free will in serving the Empire has corrected the biggest mistake that Star Wars The Clone Wars made and it's finally given a full range of autonomy back to the clones we all know and love. Attention, Sergeant on deck! I had my chip removed a long time ago. We here at Geatsleys thoroughly enjoyed the premiere of The Bad Batch, but we were left with a single lingering wish after the credits rolled on that first episode. We enjoyed the twist of making Crosshair an antagonist, but felt that it was somewhat lame to have him turn purely because of the inhibitor chip. The way the premiere went was all well and good, but wouldn't it have been so much better, we thought, if Crosshair had chosen to join the Empire of his own free will. If his ship hadn't worked after all and he became a heart-wrenching example of how good men can become evil. As it turns out, that was exactly what the Bad Batch had in store for us. We just had to wait 15 episodes for it. Crosshair went and removed his inhibitor chip shortly after the events of the first episode and continued to serve the Empire of his own free will. He saw the Empire as something that gave him purpose and he resented the Bad Batch for leaving him behind so he stuck with the Imperials despite the atrocities they committed. All the horrible things he's done or been party to over the course of the season weren't the work of some dastardly mind control chip. They were all things he was fully on board with. This corrects what we consider to have been the greatest mistake of Star Wars The Clone Wars, the addition of inhibitor chips to the law. In our opinion, the chips took a lot of the impact out of Order 66. They made it so that the clones weren't really themselves when they turned on their Jedi generals, and they implied that the clones wouldn't have executed Order 66 if they weren't forced to. They stripped the clones of the free choice to make one of the most important decisions of their lives. The concept of inhibitor chips took a fair bit of nuance out of characters like Commander Bly and Commander Cody, taking a lot of the grey morality out of them and reshaping them into clear-cut good guys. It's been said that the inhibitor chips were a necessary addition after the Clone Wars went to such lengths to humanise the clones, but the thing is, the clones were already plenty human before the show came around. Legends had many clone characters with just as much depth and humanization as those fleshed out in the show, like, for example, Commander Bly or Alpha 17. This didn't conflict with the inevitability of Order 66 or anything like that, nor did how the Clone Wars humanized its clone characters. That's because the crux of this argument in favor of the chips rests on the idea that humanized characters shouldn't execute Order 66, because the kind of people we relate to and feel for would never do something so horrible. Here's the thing though, in the real world, they absolutely do. People do terrible things. In the real world, there are no inhibitor chips, no shadowy Sith Lords commanding armies and ordering people to commit atrocities. And yet, all of the most horrible atrocities are depressingly commonplace, even in modern times. Perhaps the worst part about all that, however, is that the people who commit all those terrible crimes are exactly that, people. Humans that, in other circumstances, we probably would find relatable in some way, that we could probably be made to feel for. This premise is a major part of the story of Anakin Skywalker, a core premise of Star Wars as a whole. It's a hard thing to face and accept, but it's important that we do because that's the only way we can prevent ourselves from becoming the world's next crosshair. It's extremely praiseworthy then that the Bad Batch went out of its way to make us confront it. We've mentioned in the past that there were many clones who had their own reasons for executing Order 66 beyond the fact that their chips told them to. There were clones who had their own reasons for supporting the Empire. Were they right to? Of course not. The Empire was one of the most cartoonishly evil fictional powers in the history of pop culture 
an utterly indefensible and tyrannical state. But many clones still made the choice to support it. This wasn't because the clones themselves were two-dimensionally evil or because they were forced to or anything like that. It's because they were all indoctrinated to be blindly obedient and to never question authority. Crosshair, of course, was a bit of a different case. Blind obedience was certainly one of the things that made his character tick, but it was never a major driving force behind his actions as we know now. His resentment for his squadmates played a role as well, but odds are that probably wasn't his main driving force either. We'd bet that the other reason he had for joining the Empire was a big one, that he felt like it gave him a purpose. That might sound abstract and a bit silly, but it's absolutely a realistic motivation for a soldier and a realistic reason for Crosshair to overlook the Empire's wrongdoing. Think back to the premiere of the series. The first line we hear from Crosshair after the declaration of a new order was, Republic, Empire, what's the difference? If you've watched some of our older videos, you probably know that this was some astute political analysis on Crosshair's part because indeed, most of the Empire's evils started under the Republic. But in retrospect, this line sheds a lot of light on how Crosshair viewed his situation. Crosshair didn't really care about the politics of it all. Few clones likely did. But he was still fiercely loyal to the Republic and later the Empire because he felt they gave him a purpose in life. They were his purpose in life. Crosshair, like all other clones, was bred to be a soldier and nothing more. Fighting for the Republic was the only purpose he was ever given, the only reason he ever had to do anything. When the Republic became the Empire, he probably didn't understand what that change meant and he certainly didn't care because the Empire gave him the exact same thing the Republic had, a purpose. His fierce loyalty from the Empire didn't come from a deeply held belief in space fascism, but because the thought of not serving the Empire, of not having a purpose, terrified him. I'm pretty sure most of us can at least understand how that would have felt for Crosshair. That motivation can hardly be described as evil. And yet, as we've seen, it led Crosshair to do evil things. It led him to order his subordinates to burn civilians alive, to open fire on a child to distract his former squadmates, to commit murder in cold blood, and to help build one of the most barbaric regimes the galaxy had ever seen. That's really dark, and it's totally realistic. Above all, it's a bold writing choice that's so much more interesting than just having Crosshair be driven by an inhibitor chip. But the writers of The Bad Batch didn't just make Crosshair a vastly more interesting character. Last night's episode adds so much depth back to all clone characters. Now, even with the inhibitor chips being a factor, we know that it's far from out of the question for clones to do terrible things freely. We've seen clones with inhibitor chips who deserted the Empire, but we've also seen clones that remained loyal, Clones who participated in the bombardment of their own homes. Clones like Crosshair. At the end of the day, there's only one person responsible for a choice you make. You. It doesn't matter anymore whether the clones were under the influence of the inhibitor chips or whatever during Order 66 or during any other atrocity that they carried out. Even if there were chips in their heads telling them to shoot, those clones were still the ones who pulled the trigger. All those clone characters that executed Order 66 are much more interesting now just for the simple fact that they made a choice. Free choice is a tricky thing. It allows you to make the right choices, sure, but it also allows you to make the wrong ones. People make wrong choices all the time, and because of that, well-written fictional characters should as well. In the case of Crosshair, we have a character who we used to see as a hero make a whole bunch of calamitously wrong choices of his own free will. That was an insanely gutsy move on the part of the show's writers, and it's the sort of thing we'd love to see more of in Star Wars. So kudos to Dave Filoni and the team for this most recent episode. We're so keen for the finale. But what do you guys think? Do you see Crosshair as having been a good person with evil influences or an ultimately evil person? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.